We're back here on the John Forcade Show, and one of our John Forcade specials this week, a 2015 Ford Fusion, just $1.99 per month. Again, a 2015 Ford Fusion, just $1.99 per month. Come on, man. Come on down to Veterans Ford. We're back here on the John Forcade Show. Mike to take you along with John Forcade. John, uh, some new hires for the Saints, and uh, what I think eventually, I think very shortly, will be another hire. Uh, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about Dan Campbell. Comes in, a former player, uh, worked under Bill Parcells and Sean Payton, was the interim coach uh, with the Dolphins. Uh, interesting with him as soon as he took over they were doing the oklahoma drills during the week man you know so uh you know that tells you a little bit about trying to bring back some physicality to the game an undefined position but i think one of the things is he's going to be involved in the pitch and catch part of the game and with a 35 year old tight end i think you can see where this may be the setup of that they have tight end pretty high on their wish list mm -hmm. for 2016 to bring in a guy like Dan Campbell to work with a young tight end. Well, I think they thought that Hill might be able to get to help out that, and he just didn't do very well from this past season. He's a season. career backup. He is, and, Watson, and Watson's up in age. But what's surprising, when they brought Dan Campbell on board as to be the tight end coach, I don't know if the other tight end was relieved of his duties prior to them bringing it in, but the word was out there that, that he's looking at bringing Dan Campbell. The only position he could go and coach would be the, the tight end position right. coach. And so, obviously, the, the former tight end is no, coach is no longer here. Uh, I think it brings a little bit stability to that coaching staff. He's a tough-nosed guy. Yep. And then uh, they will be looking at a tight end down the road. They have to find him a tight end because Watson's up in age. Hill is just a backup. Uh, they brought a couple of guys. And, that, and they, Hume is a, another kind of career yeah, backup, backup guy. Yeah. But I would like to see him bring another tight end in and just you know, kind of push toward uh, making his roster and seeing things. But they had made some other changes. Uh, Aaron Glenn is the defensive back coach they brought in. The, um, I was going to ask if you played against Aaron. But, yeah. you know, it was close. Yeah. It was it close was, now yeah, yeah, that yeah, range. He's been around a while. I think he do well back there. I think, the, you know, because the guy that they had there, Wesley, who left in, I believe. Go back to Auburn. The, 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 he's back at Auburn, right? Football. And he, 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 he's kind of been around. Well, he well, didn't play with Aaron Glenn. He was, I played another Glenn. I think uh, Aaron was drafted in 94, so I missed out on that when I, he came in after I left. But the, the overall about the pitchers of the coaching staff, you're starting to see now that you know, he's going to start bringing in some new coaches. And sometimes when you can't change your, your roster, you start making some adjustments in your coaching department, and then they'll go out and some guy. You get, you get new feedback in your ear from a new coach that maybe, hey, we got to go get this guy. got to go get this guy. I like this guy and that guy. So we'll see. The toughest thing, and I remember when Mike Ditka was here, he, I brought it up to him to relate of being, and Aaron was a really good player. I couldn't say like he was, Ditka was a great player, but mm -hmm. Aaron was a good NFL player, is that sometimes when you got all that talent, it, it's so easy for you, or easier for you to play the position, and it's hard for you to coach that, because mm -hmm. sometimes it's natural for you. Uh, being a former player, now you're a coach, that, that sometimes translates into that too, and sometimes it doesn't. Well, the thing about it, Mike, and, and, and you see all these, everybody's got a bunch of coaches on their staff. There's no doubt about it. You, you would love to have a coach who's played football before. I mean, use f uh, football as a sport we're talking about. You want to have football coaches that, that, that maybe former players. That helps a lot easier to transition to do it. Some of these guys who are just, you know, career guys that go to college, they got a degree, and they want to be a coach. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but give me a guy who's played the position before over someone who hasn't. Uh, I think that guy's been around a little bit of the sport. Now, there's a lot of coaches who haven't played the game that are real good coaches. Paul Brown, Bill there's Belichick. A lot of guys. Yeah. Nothing against those yeah. guys. But you still can go get some guys who've played the sport that know it a little bit better than some guys who haven't. And it, it kind of correlates to a player who's at a position that, well, you know, I can relate to a guy who's played it before right. where who hasn't played it. And, and that's saying, because, look, there's so many, 32 coaches, I mean, 32 teams, you know, 15 coaches on the staff. Not all of them have played college or pro football. Some of them are just really good, like you said, Belichick and Paul Jones, I mean, Paul Brown, guys who just know how to coach. Another thing, too, is one guy who's familiar, certainly with this football team, Joe Lombardi, yes. back as the quarterback coach, Mike New goes to Ball State, and he brings Johnny Curtis with him, yeah, too. So uh, that, congratulations. That, that, yeah, so Johnny Curtis. That, into that thing. But one of the things is Joe knows the system. He's dealt with right. the superstar player in Drew Brees, uh, Luke McCown, through those years. So uh, that's a smooth transition to bring Joe Lombardi back, uh, basically, to, to kind of be what I always thought was the middleman between the head coach who's got a right. lot of say and right. what goes on and also the quarterback kind of 
you kind of relaying the message to both of them and trying to be that middleman that can certainly work with them. Well, he's got a name too. He's Lombardi. We all know who yeah. Lombardi's name is, and he's been around here before. He left. It didn't work out in Detroit, and he's back. And that's a great guy to bring back. A guy who's been here before, who did well when they were winning and winning Super Bowls. Who was a quarterback coach? So why not bring him back? And another guy we both discussed before to show you who I think will get the job. Dennis Allen no will question. become the he's defensive coordinator. I, I say great because he's done it before where he's, when he was in Denver and he didn't do very well as a head coach. Some guys just aren't the head coaches. Some guys are better suited at the coordinator's position and I think he works well with, with Sean Payton so why not you guys that you know and you trust it's good to have on your staff because you can deal with these guys. John one of the things and I think we've seen it in every coordinator and uh, I put this out social media wise uh, early in the week because you know word I'd gotten was that Dennis would be back was that every coordinator who's been under Sean Payton's had great say personnel wise. Mm -hmm. If it's been Steve Spagnola, if it's been Rob Ryan, if it was Gary Gibbs, I, I know Dennis Allen can coach. Now I want to find out what type of talent evaluator he is. Because a lot of times those guys have a big say on, I want this free agent, I want that draft choice, especially the early ones. Uh, Rob didn't do a good job talent evaluating. And I think he complicated things. And we saw Spagnola in the one year just how bad it was. Uh, Greg Williams was a different guy. I mean, he wanted certain things mm -hmm. in a player. And he was hit and miss uh, on some of that also. But he had better success than any of the other guys. I think that's a big key here with this hire. Because in the offseason, when you're making those decisions, Dennis Allen's personnel uh, Montre. I think that's going to come into play. Well, the problem with Rob was Rob spent a little bit too much time at Miley's on the market. <laughs> and uh, he, he had a large tab there, so he had to work that off. He was too busy you know, trying to work his tab off as well as, you know, trying to recruit players and look at players. But Dennis is a guy that we all know has been around, been a head coach, knows talent and everything. And that's the thing. It's hard for your head coach to do all the talent evaluate. you got to have your scouts. And the scouts come to these assistant coaches. Hey, i got three or four linebackers, guy. What do you think? You know, Go look at i got some DBs. i got some receivers. And they talk to these coaches before they present it to Sean Payton and evaluate, and evaluate it that way. And you're right. If you got coaches on your staff, Mike, who can actually go into this looking at themselves saying, I like like these guys uh, let's go look at these players and it takes a lot of pressure off of Sean having to making the final decision if you got guys you believe in I think he believes in Allen I think he'll start believing in Lombardi and I know he'll start believing in when Campbell comes in because those guys have been around the other thing too is uh, my neighbor's Joe Clark he's in his 80s he coached in the NFL almost 50 years one of the things he'd always tell me, Mike, some of the best coaches are the worst talent evaluators. Right. You know, they're, they're coaches. They're, they're right. not out there scouting people. But we knew last year why Haloi Kakaha was selected. He worked out with Scott Shanley. Scott passed it along to Joe Vitt. And so you can see the kind of connect the dots here that he played a part in it as a former player. Then he tells his former coach, and then Kakaha ends up being a second-round pick for the Saints. So I think all of that comes into play here, and the Saints do rely a lot on their assistant coaches for opinions on players. Well, Mike, the problem the Saints have had, though, is their scouting department. Uh, players they, they went after in a free agency and some of the guys they drafted. You can't blame the coaches. you got to blame the scouts who are looking at these guys that brought this upon the table. That's why I think the scouting department is going to get very much looked at this offseason and say, hey, you, your job's on the line, guys. Uh, you've been here long enough. You better bring me some players to the table. Key guy there, Jeff Ireland, who they yes. brought in a year ago. He becomes the key guy because he's the one, I think, that he's the one who's got enough backbone maybe to tell Sean Payton, hey, this guy's not a good fit here or he is a good fit here. More with the John 4K Show, sponsored each week by Veterans Ford. We'll be right back.